high stampers, it's the pampered stamper, and we changed the angle a little bit because of the light. But today I want to show you some tips and techniques that I learned with Brusho on Thursday night. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. So the first thing I want to show you is what I did to make this card. And this one here. Now you'll see on this card that the painter's tape did tear my cardstock a little bit. So I did find this medical tape that I'm going to try and it's a paper tape that won't tear, but I don't know if it will hold out the water. So I'll let you know about that. So anyway, what you do is you put your tape across your cardstock and then I've taken, I better move it over here. I'm going to put a little bit of the Prussian blue on my block. And make sure you always put this back in because if you tip it over, the powder will, believe it or not, get everywhere. Okay, so now I'm going to take a dry brush and pick up some of the brush show and I'm just going to dot it across. And you'll see there's probably different concentrations and that's okay because you don't want it to look uniform. That's the thing about art, it's never supposed to be uniform, which is why when you're stamping, you should always have some of your images going off the side of the paper. That's sometimes a difficult concept. Okay, so now I just want to make sure that that blue is off, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the yellow. This is actually just called yellow. The blue is called Prussian blue. And then the key to this technique is the direction of the water spray. So I'm not going to spray the water straight on. Doesn't even look like there's that much powder going on here, but you know, this stuff will last you a long, long time because it doesn't take much powder. So I've got a bit of an alternating pattern going. And now I took an old stamp and mist bottle. I'm gonna angle my cardstock a little bit and then see, I'm spraying it at an angle. Now I could leave it like that or let it run a little bit more. Why do you keep tilting it? There, okay, there. Now Rachel can get a good shot of it. Now, I like to leave it dry just like that because you'll get a bit of a different pattern and a different look than if you dry it with the heat gun. So that's for this dragonfly card. And then what I did was I took another piece of um, watercolor paper and I just did a whole background and then I cut the dragonflies out so that it would match. So that's very cool. All right, so that's the one technique. And now the other one is, well, maybe I'll do this, this one first. This one is for this card here. And what you do is you take a brush. And I should have had a, a glass of water, but I don't. So I'm just going to spray it, and then I'm going to spread it around with the brush. I don't know if this is going to do the same thing, but I'm cheating. Normally, you would have a glass of water. You would wet your brush and wet the whole thing really, really well. But I'm doing it this way. Okay. And then I will take red down the middle. Just, and you can see I have, maybe I made it too wet. Um, well, we'll see. And then blue and yellow. And then the wet brush, I'm just gonna spray my brush. And then you just swipe it across, see? And you keep going. So you can see you get the stripe patterns. With mine, I used a lot more pigment on that one, but it's a very cool controlled technique. The third one is this one here. I've taken the watercolor paper and I've run it through the woodland embossing folder. And now I'm going to take a fine mist. So I'm gonna hold it away from myself and spritz like that. And you can see how the mist is just finely landing on there. And then I should have had more good paper. I'm going to lightly sprinkle a little bit of red. This is brilliant red and a little bit of yellow. And what I'm trying to do is imitate a little bit of fall color. Okay, now I'm going to spritz again. At home, please use grid paper. I'm going to wipe this up when I'm done. See? So that's pretty cool. And because it was a fine mist, you've got a little finer detail. Now what you want to do is let this dry and then you're going to mix up brown. And to get brown, you need to add green with red, I believe. 
And to get green, you mix yellow and blue. And what you want to do, here, I'll add a little bit of water to my yellow and a little water to the blue. And a trick I learned is that you take the dark and add it to your light. Okay, so you can see how that's going. That's a pretty decent green. A little bit more. And then I'm going to add red. It's better to do this on a saucer too, but I have my blocks out. Let's have a look. Well, yeah, that's turning brown. Not quite as dark as I'd like, Want a little bit more blue. And then you go over, like normally you do this when it's dry, but see, because it's not dry, it's gonna bleed a little bit. But that's how it's done. And so I'm not gonna finish that because this is what it's going to look like. So I am so impressed, I love this. Good luck and uh, have a super day, bye.